Yo, what's up guys and welcome to another Hitman 2 news video. My name is Mr. Freeze 2244 but before we get into the video, make sure you are subscribed to the channel and hitting the bell notification to be notified of all future videos, live streams and updates. Right, we've got, we're covering a number of subjects in this video. We'll be covering the progression system that's been announced a few days ago for Hitman 2. There'll be new difficulties that'll be included in Hitman 2 as well. Also, there's a new game mode called Ghost Mode that will be included in Hitman 2 as well, which is completely brand new to the series. And there's a new elusive target been, that's been teased as well. So, first things first, let's get into the progression system that was announced a few days ago, because Hitman 1's progression system is basically, you complete the several challenges that have been given to you throughout the map, like the Silent Assassin, which is one challenge, Suit Only another challenge, etc, etc. Like even taking out this headmaster right here and putting his disguise on is a challenge completed. And with that, you unlock, uh, you know, mastery points. And once you go up, uh, progress through the mastery levels, that's when you start unlocking the equipment. But for Hitman 2, it's slightly different. So here's all the information we know so far about the Hitman 2 progression. So follow me if you can. This is the story time. Okay. <clears throat> Alright. The Hitman 2 progression system is centered around mastering locations. As you level up the mastery track for each location, you unlock starting locations, agency pickups, and new items that give you new options to take on the mission in new ways. Progress can be achieved by either completing challenges or earning performance XP. Performance XP is a new system that acts as a second avenue to accumulate experience points. The performance system awards a small amount of XP for doing moment to moment actions during the playthrough like taking someone out silently, hiding a body, or killing a target. By default, performance XP will be displayed as you perform the action in-game, but this can be toggled on or off in the settings. To visualize your overall progress and time investment into Hitman 2, we created a player profile that levels up accordingly to your total XP earned. There's also a player badge that is the visual representation of your profile level. Both mastery and performance XP are funneled into a player profile as well as the mastery track, leveling both up as you progress through the game. Outside of those two systems, we've also added more items that can be unlocked by completing specific challenges. Both XP systems will also work on the Season 1 locations within Hitman 2, um, Hitman 2 if you own the Legacy Pack. Because of that, we've tweaked the Mastery Tracks for the Legacy locations, so that may, that may give a more directed progression of unlocks, and the ambition is to give you something more valuable whenever you invest the time into the game. So basically, the challenge system is still there, that's present from Hitman 1 to Hitman 2. That's still going to be there. So this is basically going to be an addition on top of the current one that we already have. So if you complete challenges to unlock a reward, you can still do that. However, you've got this new system called the Performance XP. Basically, uh, if you shoot someone in the head, you, you get XP. If you put on a disguise, you get XP. If you hide a body, you get XP. It's only a small amount, but it will all mount up eventually. Even when you discover a new area, you'll get XP. So this will all be, like I said, it's all, they already said, it's all going to be funneled into your player profile. And that's going to be all accumulated and it's going to be added up to your mastery level, what now? And that's going to how you are going to lock uh, stings, new items and stuff like that from season uh, Hitman 2. And it's going to work the same way once you use the Legacy Pack, which is Season 1 Remastered Maps. That's all going to work the same way. So if you want the Season 1 items in Hitman 2, you're going to have to re-unlock all those items from their Season 1 maps with this new progression system. If anything, it should be more better and more refined than uh, Season 1's because it's going to, it's, you, doesn't, you don't have to just do challenges to unlock these things. But there are specific challenges that you have to do to unlock some items, so... There are some of them you have to do. So now that we've explained the progression system, we can now move on to the difficulty levels. Now it says here, Hitman has historically always been a hard game to pick up, and we are taking steps to make the game more approachable while still keeping the core that current players like. We want our difficulty levels to offer something to both new players, experimenting players, and veterans, etc. For Hitman 2, we will have three difficulty levels, casual, professional, and master to try and do just that. Casual is made to give new players an easier way to, into the game. It will also give all players an easier way to mess around in the world and see what happens without the fear of failing. Professional is the default entry point and balanced to give players a feeling of it being a true assassin, using all of the game's intricate mechanics together with their ingenuity to assassinate their targets. Mastery is for the player that needs an extra challenge. Combat will be extremely hard and the NPCs will be more aware of their surroundings, making stealth gameplay a greater challenge too. As with the progression system, all of our difficulty levels can be selected in the legacy locations within Hitman. 
two if you have them. There's also unlocks that can only be earned by completing challenges on specific difficulties to give you ways to show that you're a true master. Now that all sounds good all the way up until the end there. <laughs> it does give the option of uh, picking any of these any of these difficulty levels. However, ch uh, difficulty specific challenges is not I'm not a big fan of the idea. But you know it might be a good idea to some people, but not to me. But uh, what I think about this, I'm not too sure. I, I think it's a good idea for new, for new gamers. Yeah, of course, uh, the casual level. I don't know how easy it's going to be. I'm guessing casual mode is going to be like uh, Hitman 2016's default difficulty. Like if you go in normal difficulty on Hitman, you can't hear, they, the enemies can't hear footsteps, and when you get spotted by a camera, it doesn't count as spotted. It, uh, once you delete the evidence, it's no problem, but uh, maybe it'll work that way. And on professional mode, I'm guessing it's going to work the same way as uh, the professional mode on Hitman 2016 as well, where the enemies can hear your footsteps, and once you do get spotted by a camera, that means you have, you have spotted, you've been spotted, and the guard will be alerted, etc. And it'll ruin your silent assassin rating. I'm guessing that's that's basically how that will work. Master, I don't know how difficult, more difficult they can make it. I don't really know. Maybe their hearing and, and, and vision is completely very, very sensitive and they can hear you a mile away. I'm not completely sure about that. I'm looking forward to uh, seeing just how difficult it can be. Maybe they... I don't know. I'd love to know what you guys think in the comments. What, you're, what you think the Master is going to actually provide and how difficult it can it, can it possibly get. Notoriously, Hitman overall is a, a difficult game to just pick up and play. Uh, not any old player can just grab the game and just play it and know exactly what to do. This is why it's, it's just, it is either right. It is, it's, it's historically been a hard game to just pick up and play. I'm so I can see their point of view of bringing in these new difficulty levels in. It's kind of a good idea. However, for me personally, I don't know how to <laughs> I don't know how to cover these videos now. Like what what difficulty do I play it on? to show these uh, these walkthroughs or guides or whatever. I think you might just stick to a professional because it's, it's the midway point and I guess that's because it's the default option. I may as well just do that. For things like Silent Assassin Suit only or whatever, I can do a professional one and a master one. Um, yeah, I am assume it'll all work the same way for casual anyway, so yeah, I can do that. But I'd love to know your thoughts in the comments about what you think of the progression system and the difficulty levels and stuff like that and what you're most looking forward to. Also, if you missed it, you could see the little picture that's below it, and uh, it was, professional mode was highlighted, and in the drop down, it did say that assassination is serious business. You plan, you execute, you escape, and your handler is right there giving you the guidance you need to succeed. You have unlimited saves, all mission story guides are available, surveillance cameras are act active, cameras alert guards if illegal activity is spotted, and combat is challenging but fair. So I'm guessing in casual mode, maybe they remo removed cameras altogether. Maybe they've made it super easy for casual. I don't know. I mean, I, mean, I really am interested to know the differences between these ones, and I can't wait to share a bit more information when I get that. When I get my hands on it, I still haven't played Hitman 2 yet. Um, I'm just like everybody else in the boat. I haven't, I haven't played it yet at all, unfortunately. But you know, I'll hopefully get my hands on it as, as soon as I possibly can. Anyway, let's move on to the next subject. Have you ever wondered what it would be like to face off against another assassin? Same starting point, same starting time, same starting targets. In Ghost Mode, the first player with five eliminations is the winner. Targets are randomly selected every time, so no duel will be the same. Since you start off with no equipment, you'll need to improvise. Find ghost crates and grab disguises as you go. If your opponent scores a kill, you'll have limited time to react. Will you risk blowing your cover? Be careful, a spotted kill does not count. In ghost mode, you exist in separate realities, so a messy, chaotic approach on your end does not affect your opponent. Quite the contrary, while you're busy cleaning up or running for your life, your opponent is free to advance like a ghost. Be cunning, be creative, be ruthless. Good luck.
this one really did pique my interest. This is something I'm very, very excited about. And I can't wait to be streaming this and playing against subscribers and stuff like that. Assuming it is split screen and stuff like that. Hopefully that is an option. But it looks so cool. Like the fact that um, <laughs> both of you are playing at the same time. Both of you are committing the, sa uh, the same assassinations. And it's basically just a race against each other. But you can see each other's characters in the game. Even though you're in separate worlds, everything is still happening. It's really cool. But uh, this is the information we have on it so far. Ghost Mode challenges you to earn 5 points before, you are, uh, before your opponent by eliminating targets. To earn a point, the kill must be unnoticed and the body cannot be found for the short time afterwards. You'll also lose a point for eliminating non-targets, so be smart and be precise. Once one target has been eliminated, both players will be, uh, begun the hunt again with a new target. To help you in your mission, you can pick up items, disguises and weapons from ghost crates. The items in each one are randomized, but they are the same for you and your opponent. You can only take one to item from ghost crate and doing so remove that item as a choice for your opponent. The unique twist with ghost mode is that each player is in their own reality, where your actions only affect your reality. But you'll always be able to see a ghost version of your opponent. You'll see exactly what they're doing and what they're wearing and any items they're holding. One key strategic element in ghost mode is to use the ghost, uh, ghost items, as these are the only way to impact your opponent's reality. For example, throwing a ghost coin will attract attention in your reality, but will also do so in your opponent's reality. That sounds so cool. You'll get picture in pictures uh, updates along the way, and an announcer will keep you informed about key elements in the match. In the screenshot below, you can see that player 2 has eliminated their target, and player 1 has now 20 seconds to equalize the score and earn a point. After those 20 seconds, a new target will be selected. Player 1 will be advised not to panic, because if a player is killed at any time, they will be spawned back into the location but will retain their disguise and combat status. No points are lost upon death. Ghost Mode is a brand new game that we're excited to hear for your feedback on. When we launch Hitman 2 next month, Ghost Mode will be available on Miami and will be adding more locations shortly after launch, including World of Assassination locations through the Legacy Pack. Uh, that, is, that, is, that sounds so cool. We'll also be working on to improve Ghost Mode post-launch with updates and tweaks. And that's our part of kickstarting the discussion. We hand it over to you. So, what do you guys think? This is, to me, this sounds really, uh, it's one of the coolest things that I've announced so far in Hitman 2. Sniper Assassin is, yeah, it's, it's, it's fun, but it, it does get a little bit repetitive after a while. But this new Ghost Mode is, is, is a game changer for me. I think it's going to be a really cool thing. Um, I can't wait to stream all this sort of stuff and play against people. And the thing is, this, the five targets are not going to be the same. They're going to be randomized. And uh, all the equipment's going to be randomized as well. So you can't pre plan things. Um, so it's fair for everybody. And uh, I really hope that it's as good as it sounds. That's, that's for sure. Like the fact that you can throw a coin in your reality and it will distract guards in their reality. That's, that's, <laughs> that's something cool. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm really excited for that stuff. So finally, we can move on to our final subject, which is uh, a new elusive target, which have announced for Hitman 2 already. Now, we don't know too much about this target yet, but uh, they are going to reveal more information in a couple of days' time, and I'll be sure to let you know about that stuff. It looks like it's going to be some sort of celebrity. It kind of looks like Sean Bean, to be honest. I mean, he did sound like um, him in the original trailer of Hitman 2 in Miami. But uh, yeah, they've, I, can't, I cannot believe that they've announced uh, a new elusive target for Hitman 2 already before the game's even out. It's crazy. And it's only just one week, just one week after the game comes, is released. So on the 20th of November, just seven days after the release, we've got a, a brand new elusive target for Hitman 2. It's crazy. So you better get, you better start learning the map fast so you get the, all the ins and outs and stuff like that. I'll try and uh, obviously provide you with the the guide and i'll obviously stream it just like i used to with season one that's going to be a cool return i've got coming for the channel as well we'll be doing the stream for hitman 2 when it comes out um i'll be doing regular streams of ghost mode sniper assassin there's there's plenty to come from this particular channel and i'm excited for it there's in fact there's probably a little bit too much for me to take on by myself but i'm gonna give my darndest i'll give it my best um, I'm going to try at least. There's going to be so much content to cover. I'm just going to be trying to get them out as fast as I possibly can. But that's all the information I've got for you. This Hitman 2 update. 
Hopefully it wasn't too much of a drag, me uh, going through all that stuff and reading all that information for you guys. Hopefully it's, it was okay. But uh, that's pretty much going to do it for this video. So, again, I want to say thank you to all my Patreons. I can't be... I wouldn't be doing these videos without you guys. So, this is a really, really big thank you to all my Patreons. I, I can't thank you enough. YouTube pays terribly. And <laughs> it's, it's really bad. So, thanks for all my Patreons. The video wouldn't be possible without you guys. So, thank you so much for all your support. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching. Cheers.